Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to dealing with the materials data. In this course, we are going to look at uh, collection analysis and interpretation of uh, materials data. Uh, we are in module 1 which is an introduction to R and uh, we are uh, learning how to get data into R and uh, manipulate it, uh, specifically plot it. And uh, in this process, uh, I want to now talk about uh, specific uh, plotting libraries that are available. And uh, so, there are uh, R can do uh, plotting on its own as we have seen we can use the plot command and, and do plotting. Uh, but sometimes it is useful to use uh, some of the other libraries that are available in R. They are very powerful and they also give you lots of uh, um, handle on how to go about uh, plotting. Uh, specifically we are going to use uh, ggplot2 library. So, in this uh, session we are going to learn a little bit about ggplot2. So, there are many libraries for plotting, uh, grid, lattice and so on and uh, some of the R uh, textbooks do describe uh, these uh, libraries. But uh, ggplot2, uh, the gg stands for uh, grammar of graphics. Okay. Uh, grammar of graphics is to identify the components and rules to put these components together. Right. So, it is exactly like grammar for a spoken language. Uh, how do we get the grammar? We say that okay, these are the components like subject, verb, object for example and how do you put them together to make a meaningful sentence? So, there is a grammatical rule to combine them and once you learn then all sentences uh, or many, many sentences can be built in this fashion. So, the grammar of graphics is to identify the different components uh, for making plots and find a way of putting them together. So, that uh, you know all graphs that you see or all plots that you see can be constructed using these two namely the individual components and rules for putting them together. So, that is what uh, this uh, ggplot2 library is based on, it is based on the philosophy of grammar of graphics. And uh, the components for plot for example uh, is the data, uh, we have been working with uh, elements uh, which is the data frame, so that is the data. The geometry of the plot is the scatter plot, so we had density versus melting point and wherever you have a specific density against that melting point we were putting a point, so it is a scatter plot. So, that is uh, uh, the geometry, it is a point plot, so that is the geometry of the plot. And then there is uh, aesthetics so that is the axis, the labeling, the color, naming the plot and so on. So, there are many, many things uh, that can be done. And the philosophy in ggplot2 is that we build the plots layer by layer. So, we take the data, we put the geometry, we put one component in, let us say the plot is in, then we name the axis, then we label the points and then we give colors to them and so on and so forth. And each layer that you add is added using a plus symbol. So, that is how ggplot2 works. And uh, of course, there is lots of help available for using ggplot2. Uh, there is also a book called Grammar of Graphics, uh, which some of you might be interested. Uh, for using ggplot2, uh, I have referred to the book by Irizari, which is freely available and it has a nice chapter on ggplot2. So, I strongly recommend that you take a look at it. There is also a cheat sheet that is available online. So, I want to show you that uh, cheat sheet and it is here. So, it is called data visualization with ggplot2. So, as you can see what is the basic. So, you have data and you have the geometry uh, like what is x, what is y and you have a coordinate system and the plot is putting them together. right? And so, there are many, many different things that you can do and uh, this basically, uh, this cheat sheet gives all those commands. Of course, there is one more uh, way. So, you can take the data, you can do some statistical analysis uh, and then uh, take the geometry coordinate system and plot. 
this is done for example if you want to do a histogram plot or cumulative distribution etc. So, in, in which cases we have to not just take data and plot it, but we have to do some analysis and do it. So, so the ggplot can do that also. So, it is very useful to have this cheat sheet downloaded and stored and this chapter by Irizari also gives a link to this cheat sheet online. So, this is what is helpful if you want to get some help with ggplot too. Okay. So, this is an example of how ggplot works of course, we have to load the library ggplot too. So, we say that okay, let us do a plot and this is the data elements is the data and this is the aesthetics that is which is the x axis and which is the y axis. So, elements uh, the third column is x axis, fourth column is the y axis and the color should be done according to the second column that is what we have said and we had added a layer. What is the layer? The layer says that at every x y you have to put a point. The geometry is basically a scatter plot, it is a point plot right. So, so like this you, you, you can go on adding more layers for uh, uh, range and for labeling the points and uh, uh, labeling the x y axis and so on and so forth. So, we are going to learn about all that uh, using our example. So, let us do that. Uh, so, as we did earlier let us open R and let us first get the data in place right. So, copy the data and ok. So, as we did earlier so it is a data frame. So, we just have 4 columns and we have named the column and we have given the data for those columns. And so, the data is loaded you can see there are 15 observations and 4 variables. It is always a good idea to check that everything is in place. So, it is a data frame 15 observations 4 variables etc. Okay. So, now let us do the uh, plotting to do that we are going to use ggplot and this is the first command right. This is what we saw. So, we load the library ggplot2 and then we say take the data elements that, that is the data frame and the aesthetics is x is the third column. So, that is the density and y is the fourth column that is the melting point and these data points have to be colored and the color is according to the factor there are three levels right BCC, FCC, HCP. So, that is what the color should be and the geometry is that it should be a scatter plot. Okay. So, you can see that it is the density versus the melting point and these are colored and you can already see that unlike the earlier case the color scheme or the labeling is done automatically. So, it says that okay, what is red is BCC. Uh, and uh, what is uh, I think uh, green is FCC and blue is HCP and so on. So, so it also gives you this labeling so you can easily identify what they are right. Okay. So, that is what is shown here the colors are much cl clearer here this is the red green and the blue and so let us do the next one and uh, in this case we want to add one more element. Right. I want to name the uh, so I am going to do this I am going to add one more layer and the layer is this. Uh, so, we are going to put a label and the label is uh, from the data elements and we are going to take the um, element name from that data and use that as the label and this has just and we just are the a horizontal and vertical justification that is where you should put these uh, uh, labels. Okay. So, you can see uh, so uh, some magnesium and I do not know what was here maybe aluminum or something. So, zinc, cadmium, beryllium so you can see and uh, unlike the earlier case you can see that I did not explicitly have to say that the labels are also should be color coded according to the points that is done here automatically right. 
check takes the data and because that is there already because we have already built in this layer where we said the color should be according to this. So, it is going to use that information and do it consistently. So, it is it's, it's, uh, nice that way and very intuitive and very clear. Okay. Now, we can do uh, uh, one more thing. So, you can see that uh, these uh, labels are cut out. So, let us say that I want to uh, change the uh, range. So, I can add one more layer x limit is 1000 to 22000. Okay. So, I do this um, and then I do that and then I do that um, ok. I have to do that. Uh, so, ok. So, problem ok. Let us do this again. Okay. So, this is ggplot. So, we are going to say that this is 3 versus 4 and color according to factor and we have given an uh, x limit. So, it will go from 1000 to 22000 so that we will see this uh, names very clearly and then it is a point geometry and the labeling will be done. Okay. So, you can see now the range is changed. So, you can see the golden tungsten clearly uh, they are readable. right? So, so, what we are doing is that it is the same. So, we just say what is the data and what is the aesthetics, what is the x, y and uh, what color. Then we are adding layer by layer. We are first saying okay, change the x range. Then we are saying okay, put the data points and then we are saying okay, label the data points. So, you can do this uh, layer by layer and uh, that is the advantage of uh, uh, ggplot. Okay. Uh, of course, you can use uh, uh, labels. Uh, so, we have not done x label and y label and uh, somewhere during this uh, one of these sessions we will do that also. So, that is just one more uh, uh, layer. So, you add another plus and say uh, labs I think that is for labels uh, x is this and y is this and title is this and so on and so forth. So, uh, you can take a look at uh, the ggplot uh, help itself. Okay. or the cheat sheet uh, or the Rizaris book. Okay. So, there the, the help itself gives you some of these links for you to learn about ggplot2 and we are going to use ggplot2 also extensively in this course. So, I recommend that you install this package and we will learn how to use it for more plots. Thank you.